us all about humanity.
our humanity. It's all about humanity. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Modeling Monday. I hope everyone had a great weekend and are having a great Monday. I'm starting the stream and I noticed that the sun is still up outside and I was very confused. Couldn't figure out what was going on because now all of our phones and everything automatically change the times for us. So I didn't need to change the time on my phone or on my watch or almost on anything. So I forgot that it was a time change. So sun's up. We're starting a starting a, a, a stream. We're going to do some modeling. Um, thank you, Jason. Uh, Jason the Train Freak for stepping in last week. I hope uh, hope everyone didn't miss me too much. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's. Uh, I, I teased a little bit, but we might we might do a giveaway. Uh, Northlands caboose, maybe. Keep an eye out for that. And uh, let's see who's here. We've got uh, Anthony Dodge, the model train outsider in the house. Oh, I should just say Steve is here, John is here, and Tim is here. And I think that probably covers half of the people that are here uh, tonight. But uh, Ben got your junk and Carl in the house. Brian Page is here as well. Um, Brian, are you going to come join us? Uh, Cat Nuts in the house. Cat Nuts, if you do want to join, um, I'll put this banner up across the bottom, but basically send me an email uh, if people want to join. Um, we'll go from there. Uh, let's see. Tim, CP368 Productions. Dad Cooks is here. Dwayne Fork and Spoon Railroad. Thank you, Dwayne, for coming. Dwight Curley in the house. JD. Grandpa Rails is here. Al Mar is here as well. Al, I think you may have gotten your, uh, your car uh, that you had asked for from Northlands um inked rails is here brian uh we have joe raider black rock central crazy joe is in the house uh leslie gilpin is here leslie uh, leslie's move went successful and we're uh looking forward to seeing what you're gonna create in your new train room lynn mccurdy coming in from california norm miller checking in hey norm what's going on pete clark in the house rick bailey another sidetrack sunday member is here Roy Eltham in the house. Sarah's Attic of Treasures. John from Schuylkill River Valley. Shane's Trains is here. Shane, if you need any more uh, help with that uh, microphone stand, let me know. But, uh, you know, this is the one you can kind of see. This is the one I have. And you can put a mic on it. You can put a camera on it. You can put whatever you want on it. Uh, let's see who else is here. Thomas, Split Rock 323. 
Steve Childers and Steve 87 PSAP in the house. And we have Mike from Wicked Insanity is here as well. So let's uh let's bring up some people. Say hello, see how uh see how some of our modelers are doing today. We've got uh, Steve Childers, we've got Brian Page, and we've got James Brassel, whose last name I probably said completely incorrectly. Yeah, I get, I'm getting a a mid uh, mid. There. Um, James's channel is um something yard. Boy, am I blanking now. Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> Steve, since uh, since everyone knows you and you're wearing the appropriate attire, why don't you say hello first? Hey, everybody! You you got a little project for us tonight, or uh, you just? I uh... I do. I've got multiple projects. I've got. Oh uh, I can. If it gets down to it, I can plant some corn. Uh, um, or I can build in the barge for my harbor scene. And I've always got the fueling uh, depot, locomotive fueling thing that goes here. But to start with, I am going to wire up uh, CMR products welding, arc welder. And, oh, nice. Cool. And, uh, I'll, you know, I'm plugging one of your sponsors here. And yeah. I got this, I have this old... Uh, shack that's off of a spay engine house from the 60s uh that i uh painted and weathered up and and i'm gonna uh put the arc welder inside there steve i must say you're, you're kind of like me you have more projects than sense <laughs> yeah. well it's it, i always like to have multiple projects available because if i get uh stuck on one or i get uh, frustrated on one, I can move to another and uh, totally just keep moving that. along. Absolutely. If I had more space, I'd have like four lined up that I could just bounce between them. <laughs> so, Brian Page, what brings you here this evening? Hey, Heath. How's it going in New York City? It is going fantastic. I, I hear tonight you're basically here to keep us in line and tell us what we're doing wrong. Yeah, I don't have a project I'm working on right now. <laughs> He's going to be so... busy. I'll just monitor. Yeah, if you can just keep an eye on the chat, and if anything comes up that I miss as I'm uh, I'm working on my project, if you can uh, shout it out, that would be awesome. Certainly. And, and we've got a newcomer to the stream who I actually see in the background. You have the same exact. I have that uh, Capton tape box as well. I have that same Capton tape. That stuff is amazing for decoder installs. That's exactly why I got it. I, the one I got is four different widths. So yeah. I can grab exactly what I need, and it's uh, it's perfect. Yeah, I also use it for some of the cab cam things that we have. So, James, you're uh, you're not new to the chat, but you're new to uh, coming up here. You want to tell people a little bit who you are, and um, I'm, because I'm completely blanking on your channel name, which I shouldn't be doing. Uh, if you want to tell everybody what that is as well? That'd be awesome. Well, my channel is Boulder Creek Yard. I just started out. Um, I, I don't remember why. Oh, yeah, it was because you subscribed to my channel when I had absolutely nothing on there. And I was like, well, why don't I just start putting something on there? And it started off as like, I'm going to just cover the model railroading build off. And then it kind of went off the rails from there. <laughs> So you mentioned the model railroading build off, which is what I'm working on today. I'm working on the Walther's, what's it called, Golden Valley Canning. Um, are you uh, going to be working on one of the projects from the build off today as well? Yeah, it's a little bit of an extra piece. Uh, based on what I'm doing, I'm building this conveyor belt system for a coal stacking tube that's going to kind of act like something's coming off of the layout out of view. Um, from like a mine and then it stacks it in a yard and then the coal uh, loader itself has another conveyor belt that came with that kit for the build off. And I'm going to be working on that today, probably painting it. And you're a little bit of an electronics wizard as well. I understand. Uh, to an extent, I'm, 
I don't really know a lot about the actual electronics itself, but we figured out this uh, cab cam thing for, during the pandemic last year. I mean, we're still going through it out here in California um, with the crazy rates and everything. And we're just kind of starting to come out of a lot of the lockdown. But I'm part yeah, so of a... Don't... Va- or, sorry, there go, you go. go ahead. I, I was going to of... say, if people don't know, I was going to mention you're part of Silicon Valley Lines. So yeah, we uh, realized we weren't going to be getting back to operating anytime soon in person about June of last year. So we started putting together these little Raspberry Pis with a camera that we put on uh, rail cars. And we now allow, or we have the ability to now operate remotely with engine driver and a VPN or uh, what we call, it might actually be called web throttle as part of JMRI and people can operate remotely when we have open houses and stuff. Did you have, um, was your open house last weekend or is it coming up? The it's coming up on the 17th. There you go. So on the 17th, people can join in remotely and then it's either super chats or something they can donate and then actually operate a train remotely. Yeah. I, I don't think we're requiring donations to operate, but there will eventually be some uh, signups going around. And then if you look on the Silicon Valley lines, YouTube channel or Facebook, we'll also have more information there. I do want to put out the caveat that this is all subject to change. Of course, uh, yeah. You know, with the pandemic, if we go back into what California calls purple tier or red tier, we can't have anybody down at the layout uh, due to our classification as a museum. So that may all be subject to change, but it's tentatively scheduled for the 17th. And I think we're moving in the right direction. And what uh, if people want to watch this, what's the YouTube channel to... uh... It'll be on Silicon Valley lines. Uh, it's all one word for the channel name. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, thanks for being here. And I believe you're both a channel member and maybe a Patreon supporter as well. So I thank you uh, so much for that as well. You're welcome. I think it's only Patreon at the moment. I haven't really dived into the YouTube joining thing yet. Well, thank you. Thank you either way. <laughs> Grandpa Rails, thank you so much for uh, starting us off with the super sticker tonight. Uh, much appreciated. And uh, just to show people what I'm working on, uh, as I mentioned, it's the uh, Golden Valley Canning. Uh, and I'm going to attempt to add some windows and maybe some doors and some stuff. Although as I'm starting to cut them off the sprue, I notice the paint's coming off. I'm starting to wonder if I should have put dulling spray on them after I painted them before I cut it off, I just figured I'd put the dulling spray on after I got them all installed so that I didn't have paint issues, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, Brian. Any, uh, (laughs) what am I doing wrong, Brian? What am I doing wrong? Uh, I do, uh, I had to download the instructions though, because, uh, what came in the box wasn't complete so i've got all these little got all walter's instructions are just amazing and and this is kind of what i'm it's kind of what i'm working off of and that looks like what i got with the uh train station i did exactly exactly they're all they're all i think james are you showing yours uh yeah look at these amazing things uh, brilliance as well yeah 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 these at least it's got wording there and tells me what's what, but I still ended up assembling it wrong. So I'm glad they included three in the box. Oh, um, that is, you know, they, I, they do have extra I, parts. I agree with you all on the, the, the questionability of the Walter's instructions, but the instructions that came with the roundhouse were actually pretty good. It probably depends on when each uh, kit was originally designed. Yeah, Steve, don't make me put you on mute again. <laughs> um, that's, that's the next drinking game. Every time I go on mute, everybody's going to take a drink. That is what I heard, too, is that the... <laughs> as Thomas said, Walter's kids go, to easier this, go together easier the second time you build one. That's pretty funny. Uh, Boulder Creek is using Faller glue. 
There you go. Yep. This stuff is pretty awesome. And Rick, to answer your question, uh, yes, it's acrylic paint. Uh, Martin says buy two kits, one for practice, and that's that's actually why I'm I entered this contest is uh, I'm not modeling HO, which is what this is, but uh, you know you gotta you get a decent amount of kits for a good price, and it's kind of fun to model with a bunch of people. So I jumped in, and I figure it's easier to learn how to model on something a little bigger, aka HO scale, and. When I switch back to N, I'll be an expert. No comments on that, everyone. <laughs> I'm just keep telling yourself that it might work out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so flying crew, yes, I did. I washed everything with uh, dish soap and water, and cleaned it all off and let it dry. Um, the paint that I used on this was let's see this um the vallejo oh, there we go vallejo model color paint um i thinned it with what did i thin it with I don't remember what i thinned it with at the time uh tim says someone was dumb enough to beep their horn at the middle of the train that's blocking the crossing that's too <laughs> funny question is did the train move <laughs> yeah not. right yeah my not. N scale is a whole different world I, I tried to do the uh, horse head oil pump thing whatever it's called and when I got to the end and I had to start installing those really really tiny little parts it was tough and I ended up putting it aside because I was ready to throw it and I thought it was better to put it back in the box and save it for another day than it was to throw it across the room. At least I think that's a good idea, or a better idea. Man, oh man, Steve, I can tell where you live. I'm all jealous. T-shirt, shorts. <laughs> Out of Florida, really man. Hot. Yeah. It's actually hot right here, too, right now. We're all cold and rainy in Texas. Oh. Uh, I didn't know you were in Texas. My wife's yes, from sir. San Antonio. We live there. Fort Worth uh, area. Okay, I lived in Mansfield for five years. So it looks like there is actually a top and a bottom to these Walther's windows. And the question so the glass I would or to the frame is... It's the, the mullion in the center. The way oh. that mullion sits in the center, it's, uh, you know, it's designed to look like the window can open. So it looks like a uh, interesting window. Oh. <laughs> this is, as Martin says, if you can't see the parts, why apply them? The reason why I wanted to apply those parts is because those parts uh, are what allows it to move. So the trick was you had to glue these parts into place, but glue them in a way where they can keep moving, which, uh, yeah, it, it was. Uh... So Dad Cook says, Heath and all, the brand of dish soap you use is important. Many have hand softeners in them and will not work. Your paint will peel. Oh, I bet you that's exactly what's happening. And that's why I just don't wash anything. <laughs> there you go. See, James takes a different approach. Just uh, I use, I use this stuff. Oh, there we go. My what light's in the wrong place. It's a MIG one shot primer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just got. I it's just bought. Thick. Um, I just bought these primers that I saw online. Uh, Water based acrylic polyurethane. I don't know what oh, are. that's the same stuff, basically, just uh, different brand name. They make yeah. they make a MIG one shot for them. Oh, really? Oh, that's funny. yeah. They had a you, kit for relatively it's a lot cheaper. cheap. The MIG one's cheaper, or what I got? Cheaper? Uh, what you have, it just wasn't available locally to me, and I forgot to order some, so I picked this up at the local war gaming place. Gotcha. Yeah, I got I found this kit on Amazon for pretty cheap. It came with black, gray, and white. And I figured that was kind of the perfect 
three colors for priming things. Um, I think it was like 18 bucks for all three. Something it's kind like of a that. pain to shoot. It dries out really bad on the needle, I've noticed. But oh, once you get it going, it. it'll stick and it'll level really nicely in my oh, experience. Good. Oh, good. That's good to hear. And you can just... I have never had the stuff drip, and I've put it on pretty thick in one shot, just as the name implies. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I don't know if the the uh, Styrales or Steinrales or however the heck you say it um, has the same instructions as the one shot, but MIG seems to just have recycled their uh, instructions well, from everything else that they have. The chances of me reading the instructions are probably slim to none, so... <laughs> We'll probably get what we're going to get out of it, uh, but uh, you know. it's very. Hey, he, uh, Rick, Rick was asking if you were going to uh, sand off the paint to glue it, or is it press fit? Um, theoretically, uh, okay, Rick, I'll do it right because I'm on film. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try and glue it and see if it just sort of burned away the paint enough, but uh, instead we'll we'll get out the X-Acto knife, and uh, so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take a little bit of the edge off around each of the windows here uh, from the back painting, and then I'll take off uh, just a little bit around the, you know, the part you don't see. So James, we had this debate uh, at one point. And the debate was, at what point do you paint the parts? Because one theory was, if you paint the parts on the sprue, it's much easier to paint. Other people say you paint it when it's put together, which means it's harder to get in. Some people say you paint sub-assemblies. What, what's your sort of uh, theory I on do a mix the of, I do a mix of both. Um... As you can see over here, I have some stuff still on the sprue. I've cut off all, pretty much all the sprue gates that I can while keeping it on the sprue. And then other things I have fully assembled. So when you paint it, it fills in some of the gaps and you also don't have the glue melt the paint. Yeah. So it just kind of depends on what I'm working with. Yeah, when I back painted what I have now, I didn't have an airbrush at the time. Um, so I just sort of took a brush and went to town, which was definitely easier to do when it wasn't assembled. Yeah. I typically do more assembly and just make sure the blue uh, surfaces are clean. Yeah, and I'm kind of thinking what would have been better with this would actually have been to have painted the outside first, assembled all the window frames, and then done the back painting. Because then that would seal in all the frames and everything, and then do the, um, and then do the, what am I trying to say? I don't oh, know. And then put the windows in after I've done the back paint. So. I must say, James, you got quite the fancy uh, spray booth there. It was actually given to me by a friend. So that saved me quite a bit of money. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, so I don't think you've seen my spray booth, or maybe you have, but uh, my spray booth is currently just a, just a piece of Cardboard. Um, King Fox Junction said hi, Heath. Hello, King Fox. That's cardboard was what mine was going to be made out of um, till I got this one. Yeah, I was I was looking at like the the Micro Mark one versus what's on Amazon and stuff, and they all kind of look to be the same. This one's the Micro Mark one, and it's it's actually really kind of oversized, in my opinion. That's the, the, yeah, that's that's not their small one. That's their bigger one. Yeah, their foldable one, or whoever sells the foldable ones, that's the way to go. Oh yeah. Even if you've got the space for it, you think the fold ones are still? 
I mean, I guess yours is taking up your desk all the time now, right? I generally, I start putting it away now. Uh, it just goes under the layout when I'm not using it. Yeah, Mike just said they are all the same kind, kind of just rebranded, which uh, definitely seems to be uh, what I've experienced as well. Yeah. And it's just, you know, look based on what they look like, I should say, uh, you know, online and stuff. Yeah, there's like three or four brands that make them and then they sell them out or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I guess the question kind of is, is like, do you, do you, is there any advantage to the nicer ones? I'm not so sure there is. The uh, lighting, I think, might be the biggest, uh, you know, or not just lighting, but how you can sort of see. This one doesn't have any actual lighting in it, but I've been thinking about adding something up above under the rim here. Yeah, just a little LED strip or something. Yeah. Something My in the wife color. Of the... Says, uh, he pre paints buildings and uses Gorilla Super Glue, and the glue seems to work with painted surfaces. That's one way to do it as well. Yep. That's a good tip. I'll be back in a moment. Gonna go grab some coffee. 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 There's something from everyone. I'd never it's only it's only three here, so. Oh, that's right. You're, you are on the left coast. Uh, John Arthur says, "Hey, gentlemen." What the left coast? Uh, the left coast. Well, we're on the right coast. They're on the left coast. No. Um. Hey, gentlemen. We'll enjoy watching you all. Some modeling done from the little league ball fields are you are you playing john or are you uh watching somebody else play when i first read that i thought he was saying he was modeling that he was he was working on his little league ball fields on his layout but it's uh, uh i found one a bit more costly must have led lights and it's a different color yeah John's son's playing. Oh, cool. I think it's interesting how, you know, at the end of the day, how you get the windows to stay in and how you paint it and all that stuff doesn't really matter. So, of course, the problem is, as I'm doing this now, because Rick made me do this, uh, I'm <laughs> scraping off I'm scraping off some of the, the paint on the face of the the window that I don't want to be scraping off. But I can't imagine trying to paint these. Well, I guess there are people that do it, that paint these with a brush. You know, like uh, Crazy Joe. I don't know if she's still here, but she was painting some figures the other day with a little tiny brush. Yeah, a micro brush. Yeah. She's One here. Those one of these days, I'll, I'll need to learn that type of thing. So I'm using, what is this? Tamiya Extra Thin Cement Quick Setting. Is that the green lid? Well, they, funny you say that. They both have green lids. Or I should say the Extra Thin both has green lids. The Quick Setting is just right. a lighter green lid than the, the other one. Yeah, but the yellow, I hate the yellow. Get it ever get it to set? The yellow. I wonder what the yellow is. Does anyone know? It's, uh, I got. It. Yeah, it's right here. It says uh, Mark Fit Strong, but it's by Tamiya. Huh. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I don't. I do not have. Uh, I don't have that one. <laughs> Yeah, not don't get it. Depth depth while trying to paint. <laughs> don't get okay. it. Okay. So. Now I lost. Now I lost my bulbs. <laughs> Do you need the bulb? Bulbs. My light bulbs. I've been wearing. <laughs> oh, your light bulbs. My LEDs. Where'd you put them? I found them. They're on the end. My Life's Track says he uses the orange Tamiya glue and really likes it. 
that Tamiya Extra Thin that you have, Heath, that's my favorite right there. Yep. It's fast. That's mine too. Yep. Yeah. It seems like the people that uh, don't use either this or use the uh, models ma model masters. I also use Plastruct. This seems to be pretty Oh, yeah, yeah, good. there's that one, too. Of course. Um, where'd it go? They have a couple different types, but I use the Bondine. I know a lot of people have done, uh... oh, jeez, <laughs> Rick Bailey. Rick says, Steve Childers, that bulb hasn't been on in years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't tell anybody, Rick. I was going to say, does your wife agree with that statement? Yeah, I'm sure she does. <laughs> Here we go. It's begun. <laughs> uh oh And Rick started Ooh, the, it, didn't uh, tree he? Jokes? Yeah. Oh, who, oh, Lowell Patton. Oh, here we go. Hey, Lowell. Uh, what is the best lighting for your workbench? People are talking about uh, different types of lighting that they like um, on their workbench. And I, uh, the lighting I have is all 5500K, uh, partially because I'm using it for filming, but it also seems to be kind of the most neutral to work, you know, to use while working. So that's what I like, which is if, uh, which would be your typical cool white. What I use. Do you guys have any special uh, lighting for your workbench? Um, I just use the strip LED lights. I don't ask me what the thing is. But I got six double, six four foot fixtures in this room. Do they look uh, white bluish or do they look amberish? Uh, neither, just white. <laughs> so they're probably in the uh, five thousand, six thousand uh, range. I me. use four thousand right now, but the lights that I'm going to be putting down in my basement are uh, going to be selectable. Yeah. So I can change them for photography. Because what looks good to your eye doesn't pick up on the camera quite the same. True. That is for sure. Because if you look, I don't have a ceiling in my basement just yet. You're in California and you got a basement? I live on the side of a hill, so uh, oh. it's kind of... It was a crawl space that was dug out at okay. some point in the past and turned into a... Like I got this weird retaining wall, like four feet, five feet behind me. So the basement's like a usable space of eight by 35. Well, that's pretty good for a model railroad, eight by 35. You can get some uh, nice long, nice long trains on there with some nice uh, sweeping curves at the end. That was the plan, but then I toned it back quite a bit to share with the wife and whatnot. You have a few people on here saying they have the 5,000K daylight. Yeah. I think the key is, at least my experience uh, with photography, is the key is more about the CRI of the light, not so much what the color temperature is, because you can always adjust for the color temperature, but you can't adjust for the CRI. True. Everyone in chat's now going, CRI, what in the world is he talking about? And uh, I forget what it stands for. Oh, color color reference index? Color rendering rendering index? index? Something like that. Yeah, basically the higher um, the higher the CRI, the better it can render colors. So if you remember when LEDs first came out and everything just looked kind of awful because they had low CRI, so they couldn't render all the colors really well. Whereas the newer ones should be higher, but if you get up into the 90s, you should be okay. If you're down in the 70s, you've got you've got trouble. There we go. John saving the day. Color rendering index. 
Yeah, Rick says he's a fan of mood lighting. <laughs> Rick wears a baseball hat with LEDs on it out with his wife <laughs> to a romantic dinner. Never know what he's going to come up with next. That's for sure. Yeah, it's weird, this plastic glue, the way it does kind of, you know, it, it does sort of just eat away at the paint. Yeah, it's not a glue, it's a solvent. It melts the yeah, plastic so like, and it should melt, it should clean the paint as well, but it doesn't <laughs> remove it. Oh, I see what you're saying. I was going to say, it, it doesn't seem like I need to really remove it, but I mean, I guess it's the right thing to do. If you're having fitment issues, it's best to remove it. If it's popping into place like normal and you're not getting a lot of color bleed, then it doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm I just use a bigger hammer if it doesn't fit. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, what's nice about this too is you kind of drop the windows in, you you know, hit them with a little bit of the cement, it wicks itself into the into the seams and then you just move on you don't need to you don't need to like hold it or you know wait for it to set up or anything gotta step away for just a minute heath sorry sounds good all good uh, John says, had that issues in early stages of LED lighting in salt water reef tanks. Yeah. Yep. The reef tanks are a big deal. Want the highest CRI to replicate the sun. Absolutely. That's a good example of where, um, uh, where there's an issue. Um, so with the correct CRI and white balance, you get the perfect photo that's true to the eye. Uh, so, so Tim's a photographer. So what I'm about to say, I realize I'm talking to somebody who actually makes his living doing this but my question is is a photograph a photograph is a digital representation of what you're seeing right but is it is it really true to what the eye sees or it's more true to what the camera sees and it's in post-processing that you sort of remember what the scene looked like and then you try and kind of, you know. Oh, so let's see. Uh, who's the guy in the top right corner? Must be thinking hard about something. Smoke coming out of his ears. I'm assuming he's talking about you, Steve. Eh, that's me. I don't know who he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, and Tim says that's the editing. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think the digital image of a photograph, you're... You're kind of going to get what you're going to get, and then it's in the post-processing. You try and remember what were those colors and, and get the colors as close as possible. Uh, Steve87, peace out. A photograph is not a sandwich. But what is a sandwich, Steve? I think those are those are the important questions. What actually is a sandwich? Is it flashing? Uh, what, Steve? Sorry? Can you see the uh, lights flashing? We can. Well, we can't really see. We, we see them getting brighter and dimmer. I don't know that we really see flashing. But... Yeah, that's all they do. Okay. Can you not see them flashing? Or were you just curious yeah. if the camera was picking it up? Not just showing off. Okay. Steve, the chances of something going right for you and something going wrong for me... Probably pretty high odds. Oh, I don't know. I, stuff goes wrong for me all the time. It's not like you've had a train jump off the track onto the floor and explode into a... Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never mind, that was you. That was. So, it wasn't just any question. train. It was an E-unit. Yeah, but nobody likes E units. <laughs> uh, those are fighting words. Tim, do you still shoot film at all, or have you gone 100% digital these days? 
Uh, so Split Rock says, why blue colored window frames? The reason why is because in this picture here, you can kind of see the doors and stuff have a bluish tint to them. So I kind of figured that once I knock down kind of the brightness when I start weathering this, I think I'll get that sort of faded blue wood uh, look. So yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping for, at least. That's that's why I went with blue is because I think once I get my other layers of paint on, I think that we'll get to something more realistic. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't completely out there. But... James, I keep looking up at your uh, paint booth and I think it's a terrarium. Like you have like a little lizard or something in there because of all the green paint. Yeah, that was my most recent uh, paint job. You I used so? a whole you bottle some, of green. Trees? Uh, it was the coal flood loader. I used a whole bottle of Vallejo green on it. Oh, there you go. Just not caring where it oversprayed. Yeah, of course. Sure. Rick Bailey, thank you very much, sir. Dollar forty nine super sticker. Thank you, sir. Oh, 49. <laughs> I don't know. So some of the numbers that I don't know how that came up. Uh, Thomas wants to know, are you going to mask off the main building to paint the gray columns? Um, probably. I'll probably just tape them off. I don't really know. Um, who knows? I, I may not even paint them for, uh, for all I, uh, for all I know. Where he says, add KCS to the long list of falling flat, fallen flags. I think they said it was either 25 billion or 29 billion. The sale to CP is, uh, is the rumor that I heard. Uh, Tim Strains, I do all digital now due to the fact I can go away and fill my memory cards for a fact, fraction of the price of film. Ain't that the truth? Ain't is the CP... Is the CP uh, government side? I don't know the answer. I'm sure. Oh, I was wondering Tim if them and Canadian saying, National. Uh, Tim is saying it does not have STB approval yet, so it hasn't. So I guess the companies have made a deal, but uh, it hasn't been a, officially final approved. Blah blah blah. Yeah, the government's got to. Both governments have to approve it. Sparky is saying, hey, Sparky. Bailey, how, how did you get YouTube to add a super sticker of you and the family? Oh, that's too funny. Uh, Sparky says, CP is not government run. Okay. I didn't mean run, but subsidized. Yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, right, like Amtrak is government subsidized, but it's not government run. It's a, what do they call it? A public? I forget what they called it. I looked it up the other day. Probably like the post office. No, I think it's even less government run than the post office. Don't they also have to get Mexico's approval since uh, Kansas City Southern is down there? Oh, interesting. Hmm. That'll be interesting. Because it's a Canadian company, it'll probably go a lot smoother. I have a friend down there, and he's like, the government and... The United States aren't the biggest friends right now, <laughs> for multiple reasons. Yeah, we we don't need to we don't need to get no, into that. No, but that's why I'm thinking it might go easier with since uh, it's CP doing it. Yeah, probably true. Probably true. Why did I listen to Rick and decide to take the uh, take the paint off this off these windows around the edge? I guess the real question is, why did I listen to Rick, period, in this story? Hey, Heath's dad is here. Yes, he is. There you go. My dad wants to know, where is the Golden Valley actually? Uh, 
So my guess, complete guess, is that the Golden Valley is probably in California. And I'm only guessing that because it's called the Golden State. But, uh, oh, wait, here we go. Thomas says there's a Golden Valley, Minnesota, just north of where he lives. Yeah, I was going to say, that's that's somewhere around Minnesota. Well, I guess I was completely wrong then. Uh, it'd be cool if they kept the Southern Bell scheme with some minor changes. I think it would be cool if they swapped the KCS red for CP red and did away with the silver roof line. There you go. The one issue with this one shot stuff is you get dry needle really bad with this stuff. Do you use um, thinner or do you use the flow enhancer or whatever it's called? I forgot I had this. I haven't used it yet, so I'm going to give it a try. That's the flow enhancer stuff? Yeah, yeah, flow improver. Flow improver. Yeah, so I, was, I was doing some reading about that. And maybe, was I talking to you, Brian? I can't remember. I was talking to somebody and they were like that they don't use, they don't actually use the thinner. Uh, the thinner, I, I forget the difference now. I, I can't remember, but but the, the war gamer guys talk all about the differences between using the thinner and stuff like that. Well, this is something new. I spent many summers there in Golden Valley, Minnesota. You did doing what? <laughs> all three. The, the things the things you learn. You never heard any of those stories before? <laughs> no. I need to be careful too. I'm like moving this thing around and I can hear the uh I can hear my Yeah, just wait a few years. Steve, I'm muting you, I think, because I think that's you rustling as you roll around on the floor. I think we need to get you a life alert there, Steve. That was rough. True. But rough. Oh, apparently we had grand or he had grandparents there. Huh. Canning he canning isn't what that what you are building. Yes, I'm building the Golden Valley Canning Company Factory. That is correct. That is what I am building. I think this may be I don't know, maybe that one's the same size. I think Walters gives extra stuff sometimes, so I'm not sure if there's a... I've got two more windows, but I'm not sure. Oh, maybe it's these. I think maybe it's those, those two here. And then that'll probably be it for the windows. And then maybe after we do that, we'll do a little giveaway. People want to do a giveaway. And now that I've done the giveaway once, I know how the software works. It's not as much of a mystery. And maybe this time, maybe this time I won't uh, do it incorrectly. I'm laughing because of uh, Rick Bailey says life, life alert. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's too funny. Sparky wants to know if he won the contest. <laughs> I think we all know the answer, Sparky. You might not want to admit it, but I think we all know it. I guess the nice thing about solvent-based uh, like glues, these plastic glues, is that uh, you can kind of leave the top off and they don't dry out. I mean, they do evaporate, but they don't like... It's not like you end up with a... Uh, with a solid vessel of uh, PVA glue or something. The uh, Fowler stuff tends to jam up pretty badly, but you just take a lighter and put it over the metal tube and it'll open up real easily. Oh, so the Fowler stuff is like the uh, the master whatever stuff that's got the yeah. tip on it. Yeah, it's got the hey, metal. He's the, 
Rick says it might have been easier to fill in the windows before the four walls were glued. Yeah, so we went back and forth with this about 675 times, I think it was. Uh, and what it came down to was... I don't know what it came down to. But uh, I saw Vinny adding the windows after... Uh, I saw Vinny adding the windows after, and I said, if Vinny can do it on N scale then I could do it on HO scale. So uh, this guy will be a little bit harder to get the windows in there because it's, uh, it's you know a little bit smaller uh, to get the doors in. But it's actually on HO scale. It's actually really pretty easy. Um, and I like that I was able to kind of get the edges together and do all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I put my windows in the train station before I glued the walls together and Vinny gave me heck for that. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it's, again, I think a little bit of it is probably as you get better at it, you learn what works for you. And because I've got, you know, nothing to, uh, to reference as to part, as far as what's, uh, what's a good way to do things. I just, I just make it up as I go. Hey, as long as it ends up working, you're good. All right. So I need help. Okay, here's yes, the, you did. Who's making all that noise? Steve, is that you? That's me. Yeah. Do I need to mute you my... again, Steve? No, 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 no. So here's my Z scale layout. And if you guys remember, I put this green grass on the Z scale layout. But there are certain parts of it where the track is. You're not going to be able to see it, but. You know, the green grass isn't laying quite flat, so the track's not laying quite flat. But the baseboard that I used was foam core. So I can't just stick a screw through it because there's, you know, I won't get enough bite into the, uh, into the foam core. So I'm wondering if anybody has any suggestions or thoughts. What I want to do, basically, is get the track sucked down to the foam core irregardless of you know the ripples and the bumps and, and the whatnot of the uh of the green stuff i do have a Take little some... bit of thickness i've added some little uh standoff things so that i could run wires and stuff underneath i've got a little thickness but i'm not sure how to how to secure take it. some uh, some uh, thin veneer uh, the near oh yeah all right put it on the back side um of the foam core then you can screw your track down into the thin veneer to suck it in i did think about that you know cutting little blocks of wood and and just holding them underneath where i uh um uh -huh. where i screw okay. it. that that was that was one thought and i guess it was just as long that as long as you have multiple places around the foam core, it'll still sit level on those blocks of wood. And Rick's saying ballast it, you'll never know. Um, the issue isn't so much the ballasting. The issue is that um, oh, somebody says, St uh, Rick says, Steve, you're bleeding. Are you bleeding somewhere, Steve? Uh, Rick is saying ballast it, you'll never know. The issue is that it isn't visual. The issue is more that in Z scale, the uh, the locomotives are so light that they don't have a lot of pulling power. So because they don't have a lot of pulling power, it means that any little bumps or anything, um, you know, just, you know. So Steve says cut the grass and put glue and then weigh it down. I did think about that as well, is just cut all the grass out. Um, just trying to avoid that, but that that's definitely uh, one way to do that. Uh, DBG, DB Tech says a couple layers of cardboard from the back of a desk tablet. A couple layers is dense enough to hold a nail in. Uh, you all right there, Steve? Look kind of nasty. Yeah, just, uh, I got my wire. We're looking at the uh, the arc welder, Lincoln. Look like you got your. No, no, we're we're talking about your the cut on your. Oh yeah, Steve's, it's, Steve's it's like fine. I, cut, I cut my arm. I'm, he's like not even. 
He's not even worried yeah, about it. Yeah, that's no big deal. No. Like a little scrape. All this right. from climbing and under. So Tim was very excited about entering the contest because we were trying out a new little uh, method of doing things. And Tim won this uh, Northlands caboose. I'm talking about uh, Tim's Trains, Islands, Scenics, Family Model Railroad, uh, Tim. And Tim said, ah, don't bother shipping it to me. Just, uh, you know, just hold another giveaway and uh, give it away. So I decided for Modeling Monday that we'd, uh, we'd hold a little contest and we're going to do it the same way we did it last time. So for people that don't like it, yeah, Pete Clark Are you is got, quoting, uh, oh, it hasn't popped up the, yet to highlight it. You're going to have the settings right? I do not know that I will have the, uh... <laughs> oh, Steve, don't cut out all the grass. Just cut areas where it's loose, then put glue between the grass and the bottom board. Yeah, I'm definitely, for uh, scenery areas where it's bumped up, I'm definitely going to do that. Um, I was just thinking for the track, if I could just suck it down, um, uh, without it, let me just get, somebody's not happy. Uh, yeah. Uh, use a multi-service adhesive such as tight bond, slide it under the track, the modeling schedule. You... Yeah. So that I've got the track connected to the grass really well. It's the grass connected to the board. That's kind of the issue. So I may just need to just. At this point, cutting it out is probably the right thing to do. Um, but, you know, when have I ever done the right thing previously? So here's how the giveaway is going to work. Um, I'm trying to remember how the giveaway is going to work. I don't remember what I selected. So the, the giveaway, <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember what I did. The giveaway settings are, people are going to type in, uh, let's see, to enter the giveaway, you're going to type in exclamation point cabees, spelled just like you see it now on the screen, C-A-B-E-E-S-E, -E -E, which is the correct spelling for cabees. Uh, <laughs> and that will give you uh, one ticket. And that one ticket will enter you into the contest. We'll keep the contest open for five minutes. Everyone can enter at the end of the five minutes when the timer runs out. Uh, we'll uh, we'll hit the pick pick a winner button and we'll uh, we'll figure it uh, figure it out from there. So if everybody's ready, if anybody's interested, well, I guess that's the the other side of it is uh, I don't know if anybody wants the caboose, but let's see let's see who wants the caboose. We got forty five people here. I'm gonna hit start giveaway. Uh, we'll, we should be able to see, here's the timer and we should be able to see as people, uh, as people start typing in exclamation point cabis, uh, their name should pop up here, uh, as it goes. So let's see, Rick Bailey looks like he's the first one that typed it in and look, Rick, Rick came up. So I think that's a good sign. Yep. Looks like we've got other people coming in. Uh, Eli Fleming, welcome. Uh, good. Okay. And we're getting the responses as well. So the good news is it's working today. Uh, if you're the winner, you'll need to email me. You can email me at the same email address that's currently going across the screen for the Modeling Monday. I'll use the same one. And uh, hey, see, it's looking like everybody knows how to spell caboose correctly. It's spelled cabise. C-A-B-E-E-S-E. -E -E. Yeah, I think Sparky indoctrinated everybody. Uh, so we got 11 people entered right now. So yeah, and if you uh, if you haven't seen, I do have uh, along the back here. You can you can maybe see it. Let's see if I do this. So you can see I've got my little consist of cabezas going by in the back. Pulled by okay, now you're doing a locomotive. Now you're doing a double plural. Cabezas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the correct spelling, cabezas. No, caboose is one. Cabese would be more than one. Cabezas is what? <laughs> it's cabezas. Every caboose in existence. 
I'm saying it right. Wait, Rick Bailey's trying to enter more than once. You can't enter more than once, Rick. Once you get one one ticket, you're out. That's it. Let's go back and see how much time we have. Uh, try and scroll it up. There we go. So what would it be, Steve? It would be, these are the cabis. Yes. It's no, actually doing it wrong. Caboose. You're saying it all wrong. Caboose is, is actually the proper plural. But it's my railroad. Humor. It's cabises. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Robert says it's a it's a herd of cabise. <laughs> and uh, Rick is putting in exclamation point EOT. Which I don't I don't think is gonna work. Don't think it's gonna work. And and now Rick is typing in exclamation point red. Oh yeah, good uh, good catch. Um, no space, so it's just exclamation point. Could be no spaces. So uh, this is let's we got two minutes. Let's see if I can do this quickly before it ends. So I'm making these little pyramid things, and I, I showed this off the other day, but these came from these Ringling cars, these little billboards here. So I'm gonna make my own little billboards with human city junction things that'll then sit on flat cars and i'm going to give those away too so i think maybe uh maybe in like another half hour i'll give away uh one n scale and one ho scale i haven't finished them yet because i still i just sanded them today and i need to uh paint them and do some of uh some of that other stuff but uh, that's going to be another giveaway that I'm doing is uh, Humanity Junction branded billboards for HO and N scale flat cars. And they may come with a flat car too, if you're nice. I'm just kidding. They will come with a flat car. Doesn't matter Brian, nice Inked Rails wants to know if Cabis fly south for the winter. They do. <laughs> they absolutely do. Cabis Caboose, Kapu Kupai. Batman's back. <laughs> Steve wants to know what no O gauge. So th the way this start, well, you could probably put this this one on the on O gauge, and it it'll be a little small, but it probably work. But yeah, what kind of happened was I had the stickers made to the certain size, and I think they kind of work for N and O. So that's kind of what I'm doing. So 15 seconds to get your entries in if people want uh, people want to enter. Giveaway for Northland's Caboose raffle is going on for viewers. Use Caboose to enter. Three seconds. Two. One. There we go. Entries closed. No more. Uh, no more entry. Yeah. Yeah, Rick. I, I think Rick got it covered. He's got last car on the train. He's got uh, here, last car on the train. <laughs> Uh, well, he, he had EOT, he had Fred. Um, I think he's got himself. Uh, he had everything in there except the kitchen sink. It's so wow. would, would the a, a caboose on, on the last train will be the last rail car ever? Not sure what you just asked, Steve, but I do know that they'll use cabooses as, as pushing platforms, so sometimes they'll be right next to the locomotive when they're working a yard. But I have no idea what you just asked. Neither do I. Never mind. <laughs> oh, jeez. So I guess the other question then becomes, um, we got this answer on Friday, and besides Anthony Dodge, I'm curious if anyone was paying attention on Friday and knows why they're called cabooses. Uh, David says he's yes. getting a spring hailstorm. I know Germanic, why. It's Germanic and Dutch uh, verbiage. And what's the Dutch you want me word? To tell the answer? What's the Dutch uh, word? Uh, oh, it's almost caboose, but it's not. It's the, 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 Steve, you lost. But you want me to tell what it is? I'll tell you what you it lost. is. You, you already said what it was. You said it's, it's Dutch it German. For... 
So while we're waiting to pick a winner, should we say hello to Z? Hi. Hi, Z. How's it going? How long have you guys been on? An hour. We start at six. Um, hour and five minutes. Oh, it's only four here. Usually that's what time I okay, get so on. So we started at three for you then. Yeah, I guess. Well, wow, you don't, I gotta change, you gotta don't change go on daylight time. savings time and the rest of us did. Yeah, we don't. Because yeah, you don't we know don't. daylight savings. Uh-uh. What, 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 <laughs> what country do you live in that they don't go to daylight savings times? We live in the Wild West. Arizona, I take it. Arizona. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Morning. Okay. Greg, Morning. does your time in Australia change? No, it's 10 a.m. here, so normal time. Well, I started at 9 a.m. your time. I know, I know you did, but I've been so you're trying an hour to get late. My... Did you bring the donuts? Yeah. No, I've been trying to get my OBS working. Oh. And, and I could not get anything. I just right. gave up. You seem to keep having problems. Yeah, I had video this morning and no audio. I don't know. Well, one day we uh, got to get on Discord or something and uh, figure out what's yep. going on with your. Yeah, yeah. Your, so yeah. I was trying to get both cameras, but I can only have me one camera. So I thought, oh well, I'll hop in. It's better say hello. I love that James is actually still modeling, and we're we've all uh, devolved to uh, to yakking at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I don't need thirty pounds of pressure to do this for this. Paint. We're all watching. Let's, <laughs> let's see that airbrushing technique. Critique. Ooh. Okay, so I've updated my alarm, so now I should be on time. I don't know. I don't even get out of work till three practically. Didn't you? Uh, YouTube should uh, the reminder should I would think come up the correct time if you're. But, yeah, but if I'm know. at work, I don't see. Oh, you're, uh, you're not on. You're not on YouTube while you're working. Well, yeah, but I can't always watch it. Anthony Dodge is on YouTube while he's working. <laughs> Only at lunch. <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. Hey, sometimes, he, he Clark, sometimes, uh, sometimes I have it up. Clark but... said to tell you, diggers didn't work. Diggers, your entry didn't start. Let's, so let's see. Let, let's go through. Let's look. Oh, add to stream. Here we go. So let's go through. And everyone thing. can see whose entry worked and whose didn't. Um I know it, you know, it's a computer. I'm sure it doesn't have favorites, so oh, no, I, I don't no. think it would have intentionally. Um, so part of the you don't trick, type it right, it won't. Yeah, and part of the trick of this challenge is you've got to know how to type Cabis. So that that was definitely, uh, I think, part of uh, with an actual part of it without space. So. So here's the question. Do I resume entries and let some of the people that couldn't figure out how to type Kibis in, or should we just do it with uh... Sparky still wants to know if you want. Uh, <laughs> I, I think we're just... Sparky. It's not that warm, John. It's kind of cold. I don't know what degrees. Let's see. 72. Arizona, it's got to be oh, 72. It was 50 yeah, it's today. Cold. That's, what I keep, in shorts. that's what I keep my AC at. Oh, Actually, we keep our AC at 80 or we'd be paying the bank too much money. Or we have to withdraw everything out of our bank. 72 uh, is cold. I uh, ever everyone hold on to the <laughs> cat nuts says resume. I I'm, I'm just gonna hit uh I'm just gonna hit pick a winner. Yeah. And uh, 68 here. Pick a winner. 60? That's what 68. we put up. Oh, 68, yeah. That's pretty nice. I mean, you know, that's when we take our jackets off. I thought um, you were saying no, that we I don't take people till watching. Till it's warmer than that. <laughs> I was going to say, if I had 68 people watching, that'd be pretty impressive. I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner is DB Tech. DB Tech. Woo! Woo! So, Congratulations. Hi, so DB, in order to collect your prize, you need to tell me what DB stands for, and you got to make up something really good. 
Uh, <laughs> otherwise, just uh, just email me at humancityjunction at gmail.com. Dis- disabilities. In addition to the, the caboose, uh, I also have uh, a Northland sticker and a Human City Junction button because I know everybody wears buttons these days, right? I do. Oh, look at what look at what Sparky said. Cool. What did Sparky say? <laughs> Dingbat <laughs> Tech. Sparky says DB Tech stands for Dingbat Tech. Sparky, I got my package, and thank you for the extra stuff. <laughs> uh, congrats, DB Tech. Awesome. I'm gonna move on, and well, I think he, I'm gonna. I. I uh... I broke down and ordered the uh, Alpha Mirror today, utilizing your discount code Iron Planet Hush. Awesome. Uh, if people didn't understand what Steve was saying because he broke up a little bit as he was talking. Yeah. Big talk. Um, yeah, uh, this is an Alpha Meter by DCC Concepts. Uh, you can get them at Iron Planet Hobbies. Uh, I modified mine a little bit for my sort of situation here. I put it in a little uh, project box. They added some connectors on top, but these work really well. You can put them in the fascia of your uh, railroad, and it'll let you know the voltage and the amperage uh, on the track side. And fascia. the yep. idea is, is if you see thing. your amperage climbing, fascia. it may fascia. mean that you have a bad decoder, um, and it'll also just uh, give you some other indications that, you know, Everything with your power is yeah. good on your layout. Yeah. Or if you could, the other thing, which in, which is always a good thing, is to have it separate. Is if you've got some DCs that you want to convert, um, I have it on my. I have one that I made up myself that I can check how much current's going through the motor. So you, before you put a decoder in, you know whether it's going to work or not. If it, if the current's too high, just forget it. There you go. Very good. Very true. That's what I'm Very about. true. Yeah, you can see if it's a you know half hand motor or or whatever. That's a great use for it. I I Maybe actually built my I'm own. Sure. Your own alpha meter or your own? Uh... My my own oh, al- well, alpha meter. Yeah. So um, what DCC Concepts claims is that the reason theirs works so well is because of the way it handles the DCC signal. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, mine does Hi, too. <laughs> uh, there's a, all's mine is is a, is a volt and amp meter, right? And I put in a bridge rectifier to handle DCC as well. Mm, yep. So, and, and that way, because my mate Dave... Um, it's got DC, and we sometimes he's got both DCC and DC. We before we use a DC on anything, we actually check to make sure it's it's okay because we had one engine that was pulling an amp and a half. Ooh, ooh, ooh yeah, I blew a like decoder up. <laughs> yeah, well, we that's why we blew a decoder up. So that's why I built it so as we can make sure that we don't blow any more up. <laughs> I was doing a Heath moment. There you go. In, in Sorry, my defense, Kate. in my defense, I have not released the smoke. I, I well, that's actually I did blow I did blow up one decoder. That's true. I forgot yeah, about well, that. Well, but the, the engine ran fine. Like like you you put it on the track, it runs perfect to run. It it was a good engine until we on put DC. the DCC in, and it, and then we we found out that it was drawing so much current. Just wow. Yeah, I mean, in my case, it was uh, that the the motor was shorted to the chassis, so it ran oh. it ran fine. Um, Sparky wants to know what's great. I don't know if he's talking about the the alpha meter that we're talking about, or if he's talking about something else. Don't we know. never know. Yeah, we we don't ever know. Um, so I'm moving on to my little upper windows here on my thing. I, I'm going back to modeling. I don't, I don't know what everybody else is doing. So can you see my setup, you guys? Is this how you'd glue that together to make it 90 degrees? Uh, let me make you bigger one second. Um, Ink Rails wants to know, it. Steve Childers, what made the arc welding light you showed at the beginning? I don't know how to use this fancy little thing I got, so I don't know. Can you see it good enough? 
So if I put um, glue, would that be is, a good way? I think that, that is, is a uh, CMR products. Yeah, right, you can use I, the link in my description, and it'll it's take one you of, to CMR products, and they've got them on the website. Or you can stand it up in that corner. And you know. And uh, okay, so I had it stood up. He uh, discount like like for fifteen percent, isn't it? Uh, fifteen percent off. Yeah. So what would you do like that, yeah. and then put glue, and then smush against it? Yeah. Yeah. So what I did, Z, is if uh -huh. if you look if you look at my camera real quick, you can see I got these little corner magnets. Yeah. So I would put one of these at like the top of it. Like, and then I would use those on the bottom of it so that you got the top square and the bottom square. But oh, that should work good idea. You. Now i got to buy something else. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. but that should, what you're doing right there should work for you as well. Uh, well, I wasn't really exactly ready to glue it yet, so I could get those other fancy little things you got. I think I got mine off of Amazon. Yeah. I, oh. Who's got a link? <laughs> you, you guys, uh, i got to say this, you guys talk about Amazon and that's great, but here in Australia, <laughs> you could probably triple the price that you pay, if not more. On Amazon. Mm -hmm. well, guys, so... No one told you to live in Australia. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, if I'd, if, if, I'd, um, if I'd been where my dad came from, no, I would be in England, so... Um, <laughs> Because my dad was English, but yeah, they've they tripled the price here. That tray is is well over a hundred plus dollars that Z's got. But can you yeah. get it somewhere else, not on Amazon? Yeah, but but even even wherever we get it from America, the price is just through the roof. Huh. Yeah, I mean it's the same thing like in Hawaii, right? I mean everything it's an island. Everything has to be flown in. It's not made on the island. Yep. So the price is it's price just it's often the, the shipping cost. At the moment, even from England or Japan, the, the costs have gone up through the roof. So if I was to buy, say, a packet of, um, you know, five, five people and that's, you know, 10 bucks, it will cost me $65 to get it shipped. Well, Greg, I've got one solution for you. You make friends yep. with somebody that lives in the U.S. You send, to. Everything, you send everything to their house. And then they ship it to you all in one box as a gift. Yeah. One yeah. time. Hey, yeah. Z, DB Tech said that looks correct. Thank I've you. Been using, um, to the guide. I've been using Hattons and uh, Rails of Sheffield. Their shipping costs are very, very cheap in comparison to Down everybody to else. Oh, well, that's good. So, you know, I, I can ship an engine um, or a carriage for about four or five pounds, which is, um, hang on, seven dollars. Whereas if I buy from anywhere else in England, it can be anything up to 30 pounds, which is about 60 bucks. Well, so I've been shipping, I've, you know, I've been shipping this, this kind of stuff out, and I'm paying anywhere from seven dollars and seventy cents to somebody on the east coast to i think nine dollars and ninety cents for the west coast yeah i pay about the same inside australia but um see the other problem we have at the moment is here in melbourne we have no international flights coming in because oh, uh, sparky just said it's almost cheaper to get a plane ticket and just pick the stuff up yeah. well i'd love to but we can't we have no planes out of here yeah, they're all well, banned. Yeah. So yeah, all we will have no international flights maybe until October this year before we start. This is definitely uh, definitely unusual times. Oh, you're not James. Joking. You're so quiet over there. James is just painting away. Yeah, the uh, I don't know how loud the airbrush is. He's concentrating. Oh, you. You, you could be like I haven't Steve heard your airbrush at all. I was say, just be like Steve and you can leave it on and make all kinds of noise. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you can hear it. Hey, I know it's off topic, but your camera is looking good, I muted myself. I turned the top back on. Hold on, someone just said, Brian? my what's looking good? I said it's off topic, but your <laughs> cannery is looking good. Thank you, sir. 
I don't know what, why would you think that's off topic? Oh, is that what he... <laughs> We're talking about shipping. That's why it's off topic. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my fault. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> just they teasing. Just, I'm, I'm about to put the shipping doors in on the cannery. There you what go. What was the name of the stream oh. again? <laughs> shipping stream. Shipping Monday? <laughs> Logistics Monday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, having a degree in transportation logistics I can fully comprehend wait did you just say you have a degree in transportation logistics yep bye Rick wow that's kind of cool bye Rick see you later Rick bye Rick so, yeah. Ron says and yet we can send the same thing out of the country for half the prices yeah I was going to say, does it cost us as much to ship to? As it, yeah, if it's cheaper, then we could just ship. Yeah. I think it is cheaper. Yeah. The, the problem is that places like Amazon and any of those shops that, like in England, Hattons and, and Rails of Sheffield ship very reasonably. Everybody else is triple the price, price because I think they're trying to make a markup on it. Uh -huh. So you can get it other places, just not on Amazon. Well, yeah, I mean, oh, look, Amazon here in Australia is just gross. Okay. I guess the well, good just news is Rails insert of other company. Well, the good news is Rails is of Shatfields uh, and Hattons are good companies, so you know they should have almost everything you need. Not quite, but um, they have a lot, yeah. Um, but... But yeah, but then then you so you know like about four, five, six weeks before we get it. I think we've angered Greg tonight. <laughs> no, Greg, you haven't. Greg, Greg's on a rant sure. tonight. He does <laughs> demand a redraw. I'm doing. What? I'm doing a Tom. I'm doing a Tom. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna say, Tom would get along great. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Anthony uh, oh, wants to know if it's a cannery, would it have doors or lids? <laughs> uh, there we go. It's there only go. a Good door question. if it's not a jar. There you go, another one. Probably wouldn't have a lid right now. Apparently, those are really hard to find. Hmm. Well, this is my other They're thing. This is another lid show. Lids are legal in uh, Colorado. Oh, what? different lids. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. John's freezing, apparently. Look, there I got it. Uh, Hatton's right, and Rosa ship will only ship once a week to Australia, so they ship bulk mail price. Ah. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what it is, is they ship enough stuff that they can do it in bulk. Uh, uh, who's well, snapping things? I it's, was, it, I think. Oh it's my gosh. very hard to get stuff here at the moment. Um, it, It's seriously hard to get um, new stuff. Um, there are very few places that have have end scale, to be honest. So, well, at least you can watch us do stuff. Oh well, I'm doing stuff. I'm still working on my building with lights and um, my Arduino. Um, I'm just not getting enough light back. So, I tried painting one side and that didn't help. So, um, I've gone another route. That's what I'm working on. Interesting. So this door, maybe this door fits this guy. This door doesn't seem to fit that other guy. Yep, there we go. This door goes here. You'll just have to keep trying them because the Walter's instructions won't tell you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, P. Clark says snapping its Steve's knees. <laughs> Yeah, I looked at one of those Walters kits. They're about 120 Australian dollars. Jeez. Yeah, I think uh, I looked this one up today. I think it was like 24 bucks or something. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's from our best shop here in Melbourne um, for end scale um, for what I model. Um, there's only really two stores that do major end scale. That's the one that Shannon works at, but that's yep. more American. And the English one is the one where I go to, and that's really it for Melbourne. 
you need to uh, talk to Shannon more about what he does, and maybe you can get in on his thing. And yeah, I, I, mean, I should do that. Yeah, you you don't get you don't get things as instantly, obviously, but you know it's better than. Uh... That's what you get for having that, uh, you know, down under oh. aura. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we actually have our first train show coming up Easter Saturday. Oh. And that's. Now, uh, like 14 months, 15 months since we've had a train show. No, it'd be longer than that. Yeah, I don't well, think I've had a train you know. show in a long time. Yeah, well. Yeah, I need to get it, some, uh, Some I want some O-scale tubular track. And it's like if I could go to a train show, I could get it for virtually nothing. Yeah. But, you know, looking on eBay and stuff, it's like people just want ridiculous money for some tubular oh. track. Is Melbourne okay. where you don't have to wear masks, really? Like, oh yes, we have to wear masks. Okay, um, only in certain shops. Um, some of them are okay, but if you go to a supermarket, mandatory. If you go to a train shop, mandatory. Okay, um, um, just depends. There are some places you don't have to, but we're we're still wearing masks. However, okay. we've just gone twenty five days totally free. That's good. Wow. I mean, yeah. Let's, it's not, good let's not talk about it too much because I yeah. know they, the YouTube doesn't like it too it's much. Still, when people do. Oh, that's still yeah, sorry. Right. That's yeah, funny. I watch Mighty Car Mods, and that's like one of the real only things that I get to see over there. And I wasn't sure how widespread that was, or if they just ended up in the proper well, places. It's here in Melbourne only. Other states okay. are different. Yeah, I, I don't remember where they're at. Uh, DB Tech is asking if anyone's got a CNC engraver laser thing. Hmm. I think that's a no. <laughs> no. I don't. I definitely don't. I considered adding a laser to my 3D printer, but it just wasn't worth it. I don't know what it is. I don't either. I think it's basically like a desktop CNC or a desktop mill that you can switch Probably like out to a, a laser. Cricket? Yeah, like a cricket, maybe. Oh, okay. I, love, I know what a cricket, a cricket is. I would love a cricket. That would be awesome. I love looking in the Micromark catalog and seeing like the mini lathes and all that stuff. I was looking at one of those set in one tools they've got in the Micromark catalog. Mm -hmm. That looks awesome i have um i have a um a mini um bench saw which has a portable drill on it yeah that's pretty awesome yeah i may actually get all these <laughs> windows and doors in here by the end of this <laughs> what happened z anthony <laughs> I tried a laser add-on to my stuff. Accidentally blew up Algeron. Alger. Alger Alderon. 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 <laughs> Star Wars. It's the planet, planet that the Death Star blows up in the beginning. Oh, that was you. <laughs> That's Just an odd shape. Hmm. What am I going to do here? Where's my cutter? I love something okay. that can uh, laser cut masonite. So, okay, let me put my picture back up. Uh, how do I do that? Um, I want the paint and tool organizers from Micromark. Uh, Sparky says, had Sparky's Pizza in Melbourne. It closed a couple of years ago. I still have a menu from there. Nice. <laughs> uh, DB Tech is clarifying, like, if you wanted to cut out building panels or something, it can cut or engrave. Yeah, so probably like a cricket type thing. Hey, Heath, I apologize. <laughs> I have to uh, get you out of here. Oh, no. Oh, good, uh, Brian. No, thanks sharks for, with uh, laser beams. <laughs> thanks yeah, for thanks coming. for having me. Much appreciated. See you later, man. Take care, everybody. Bye, Brian. See you next time, Brian. All righty. Uh-oh. Look, look what just happened. 
Oh no. That's never a good thing. Better get your uh, tray. Can you see? What I'll put my other windows in you? first. Uh, where are you, Greg? Ooh, that looks nice, Greg. And the, the beauty of this is it's variable speed. Oh. So you can actually modify the speed, and then you've got an add on drill which plugs into the side there, like that. And you can also put a wheel on it. Um, these were about 300 bucks, and I bought one on eBay the other day because it was 80 bucks. Hmm. But it's a really nice little um, tool for cutting wood and plastic, thick plastic and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, that is brilliant. So it's about a three-in-one. Very nice. I've used it quite a bit already. <laughs> so now that Brian's gone, I thought we could maybe do another giveaway. <laughs> um, so we're going to do this. <laughs> um, so this is going to be um, – it, it will come with a flat car. Uh, I just don't have the flat cars pulled out, but it's going to be, we're going to do the HO one first. So I'm going to put my branded, this will be painted white. We'll put the branded sticker on it and it'll look like, you know, it'll look a little bit like this N scale version, except it'll be my, my logo. And uh, Andy says, Ooh, giveaways and spark Sparky wants to know if he won again. We haven't even started yet. Sparky. Andy says, Ooh, giveaways. Okay. So let's, uh, bring this back up here again and let's go over you don't have here. a spinning wheel you need a spinning wheel oh this is better is it <laughs> you, is it though have you not seen uh, i think this is so much better it's okay. better for me so five minute timer and it is exclamation park exclamation point billboard ho with no spaces so here it is right here Ex on the screen, you can see the bottom left corner there, exclamation point, billboard, HO, to enter. And we'll wait five minutes. And then when this one's done, we'll do one for the end scale guys too. So I'm sorry, O scale guys, you're on your own for now. But well, the O scalers can enter the HO one. It's probably uh, close enough in size. There we go. People are starting to uh, starting to get their votes in. It, now you should get a response if you've entered it correctly. You'll get a response. If you don't see a response, it means you spelled something incorrectly. So keep an keep an eye out for that response. So again, it's exclamation point billboard. H O. I'm gonna keep. Keep putting windows in. Oh, I must have done it wrong. Oh. It's <laughs> Steve. What'd you do? <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. Steve. <laughs> it nope. just took a while, Steve. I had to wait for mine, too. Pink drills. Yes. Oh, I don't, well, I don't know. Steve, are you, are you having a hard time with the. Uh, Oh, I don't spelling? know. Yeah, probably. Uh, Rail artists, what are you talking about uh, giving away? Hey, I missed the first comment. I don't know if people can see, but I'm still uh, I'm just working on some windows now in my, uh, in my other building. Still scraping the paint off. To, uh, There's my you, wheel. Steve. I just saw your... But I don't remember how to trigger it. <laughs> oh. I don't remember how to make it spin. But how I'll do have people to enter? Look. How do people say uh, Same. Uh, oh, this is a different thing because it's like points. Everybody gets points. Well, te technically the, the tickets are points. Yeah, that's yeah. technically what it is. Well, this one you give everybody points and then they buy things with their points. Ah, gotcha. That I used yeah. to do, yeah. They get drawings. 
this is kind of similar where you can set it up where you know if you're a subscriber you get extra points if you're yeah. you know get various things but. But for this, I'm just doing it simple. All right, two minutes left. So, is that a widget? This is Streamlabs. Right. Oh. So it's uh, okay. Streamlabs uh, widget. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's it's one of the, oh. one of the things are streaming. It's but I'm not using thing, Streamlabs. Right? I'm using OBS. Yeah. So I'm just screen sharing the. Uh, oh. I'm just screen screen yeah. sharing the web page. Streamlabs okay. OBS is a thing, although it doesn't have quite the same support. That's what I have, Streamlabs OBS. So would anybody yeah. be interested in Rail Artist giving away a print of uh, some of his artwork? Oh. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Z Sparky wants to know how many points he has. You have all <laughs> the points, Sparky. You have all the points. <laughs> The <laughs> Andy, the whole point point of the contest is you've got to know how to spell the thing to enter. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't even misspell it or anything to make it hard. Forty five seconds. You want to enter now or never? So you said Streamlabs, not Streamyards. Correct. This is it's, so it's yeah. Streamlabs. So yeah, so is it a widget on Streamlabs? Um, it's a part of the cloud bot. Okay, I get it. <clears throat> yep, so it's a part of their sort of moderation tools, basically. <laughs> 10 seconds. Betting. Polls. It should be, I think it's the one to the left of betting. And Polls. closed. Cool. Okay. I can look into that. I could use that. Betting is closed. Polls are closed. <laughs> so here we are. I got all the got all the windows in. Into the doors. Ooh. In both of my uh, both of my little pieces. Let's turn this one around. Do I want a back door on my house there, you guys? Yes. Fire department requires two. Uh, yeah, this is the two wild west. Of, uh, exit. Two, two this means. This is the wild west. Egress. A big window would do. Exactly. You could use a big. Uh... Make um, a back door. DB, uh, email me uh, for, for my Fridays. I post the link up in the chat, but for Mondays, um, I just have people email me. You can see the banner on the bottom. You just email me, uh, email me there. Uh, okay, so let's go back and let's pick a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Dave P. Yay, Dave! Woo! All right, Dave. Steve, why are you breaking up? Because his he's got his mic set too high, the gain on his mic. He's got to turn the oh. gain down. Turn your gain down, to him my, afterwards. Uh, Steve. Use some compression. <laughs> you do, yeah. You could use compression. Is this any better? Yeah, that's yes, great. Much better? better. Yeah, much better. There you <clears> go. I just moved the. I just moved the. the uh, we'll move it again because now you're breaking up again. I love compression. Oh, move it further away. Yeah. Okay, so Dave P won that one. Oh. We're going to complete this one. We're going to go back and we're going to change the little raffle thing that you type in. And we're going to do the next one's going to be billboard N. N. Save. There we go. And we go back into custom. And oh, so this yeah, time, instead of billboard HO, we'll type in billboard N. And this will be for the end scale folks. <laughs> why, why is that funny, Z? Spark. Uh, oh, what's Sparky doing ink, now? Ink. No, who is it? Who said it? I thought it was funny. Uh, Steve said it. Steve, Steve's on a roll. Coal cart from the power plant. 
<laughs> Bye, Split yeah. Rock. Uh, Sparky, you didn't win sure, again. Yeah. I think you should thumbs down the channel some more. <laughs> How many thumbs down do I have right now? I, I've been getting about five on average, I think. I only see one, but whatever. <laughs> uh, one, yeah, one's good. Uh, so Thomas, if people don't know, uh, is it looks like working a yard right now. He's about to pull an empty coal train from a power plant. <laughs> That's so awesome. He sits in the the cab of his locomotive and watches. Uh, can't wait oh, till really? Monday. I don't have wow. to. Wow. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it would wow. be cool if you could join us one night. Ooh, that'd be fun. Uh, yeah. So here we go. Here's the raffle information. Exclamation uh, point billboard and no spaces. I tried to do a live stream on Saturday. I couldn't do it. Really? What came happened? Back. Well, hang on. I'll tell you. I came back home and I could do it. So I was looking up on YouTube. You are not allowed to live stream no, unless you have a 1,000 subscribers on, on the mobile. On a mobile. Yeah, on the phone. And there, I didn't know tricks. that. There are tricks. You can download the Streamlabs app for free. And you could stream from the Streamlabs app for free on your phone, or you could use StreamYard for free. And you should right. you can do it that way. Because it connected and then it booted me out. And um, whereas at home here, I was able to do it. So I, I went, what the heck on is going computer, on? On your computer, right? Yeah, on your no, no, on my mobile. What? Uh -oh. But That's I've got to say... Yeah, but hang on, my mo where I am now, my mobile's not real flash, so we actually go through my Wi-Fi. Oh. And that's why it worked. Mm -hmm. um, I really didn't know that you weren't allowed to have more. Than, well, you're not allowed to live stream from a mobile, so I'll have to try that for next time. Did I get another thumbs down? Andy Ambrose says uh, it seems that I got another one. Really? Yeah. Yeah, Thomas, let's uh, let's figure out what's going on with your monetization. We'll figure that out at some point. Uh... <laughs> YOBS monetization. <laughs> yeah, so exclamation point billboard N. We've got two minutes, 15 seconds for any N scalers. Or I, guess, I mean, anybody that wants to enter. I don't care if you're N scale or not. Uh... Let's see, we've got <laughs> se seven people on this one. It seems like there are not nearly as many end scalers as there are. Uh, well, I, I would end it, but there's no point because it'll take too far. So there you go. My door is nine foot. I don't think that was what I wanted. Yeah. So apparently the thumbs down I got was there 15 minutes before I even started the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, so question for Heath, how on earth do you pay a royalty fee for copyright music on YouTube? I do not. I use copyright free music. Um, most yeah. of the music I use is from Harris Heller called Stream Beats. Uh, you can download it at streambeats.com. And the other um, piece of music that I use is from a, you know, another copyright free thing that all you have to do is give attribution. So. Yeah, um, it's important that you use the copyright free. I, I've been um, setting up, I've said this before, a stream for a church. Now, we have full copyrights. We have streaming copyrights. We have video copyrights. We have music copyrights, et cetera, et cetera. So, you put so it, it on YouTube. down all the time. Yep. And no, no, they just take out the music bits, even though we have the copyrights. They yeah. just yep. added a feature that will actually scan your video as it uploads. To make yes, I know. Whether yeah. but it, it works. It, but it does, and it locks it out. So it won't actually scan our copyrights, which actually at the start of the stream, and every piece of music has the copyright on it. Yeah, well, and we still oh, get streaming. Yeah, that's the difference. No, no, no. Now, now it just came out like yesterday. There's a new oh, thing okay. that it'll tell you while you're uploading. It, it like literally just came out, Greg. It's not, it hasn't been around before. Oh, uh, I, did, I don't think it does it for streaming. I did a baptism on Sunday, you see, and again, the same thing. Yeah, but it, it wasn't available Sunday. It just came right. out. Cool. Uh, yeah, it just turned on for me. Like, I think I uploaded something before noon and it wasn't there, and then I uploaded another thing like two minutes later and it was there. Yeah. Oh. 
It was released at 9 a.m. Eastern time or whatever, so it would have been. No, that's not right. They might have been rolling yeah, it, was... it out. They do staged rollouts, I think, for yeah. some places. Um, if someone can, any of my uh, moderators, if people can start posting Tom's link to Tom's stream, uh, I'm assuming oh, yeah. Tom is streaming at eight o'clock tonight. And uh, once we get that link posted, we'll, uh, we'll pick a winner for this. For I this, hear you, uh, real artist. And so the chicken dinner? Yeah, no, Z is talking about where he says he'll never, uh, he'll never opt for monetization. But yeah. There's also services like Epidemic Sound where yep. it doesn't have all the songs, but they they supposedly promise or guarantee that they're not going to flag you. Well, and Harris Heller stream beats. What I really love about them is that he actually gives you, uh, when you download the music, you can download a license. So if you do ever get a copyright strike, then, um, all you do is you just send that PDF in, you know, and you're, you're good to go. So, Oh yeah. Well, you go in and there's a dispute and you put your copyright licenses in the dispute. Cause that's what yep. I had to do yesterday. Yep. That's it. I think with yep. something like epidemic, uh, since they're, they have access to that content background or copyright background system. They, when they do the scans, they can actually see it. Although that doesn't stop these other trolls from doing it. Yeah. It's no, well, because you actually, when when we were streaming on um, you, um, Facebook and that, we actually have to have a copyright um, YouTube, um, or sorry, a copyright for streaming. So uh, Sparky and John and Andy have posted uh, Tom's link. So oh, yeah. I am going to uh, pick a winner on the N scale one, and. Uh, after I pick the winner, if people want to post in the chat anything that they've got going on, anything coming up, uh, any sort of stuff like that that you want people to know about that's going on with your channel, please post it in the chat, and then we'll all head on over to Tom's, and we'll we'll see how Tom is doing. So let's uh, let's see who won the N scale one. Bernard Bernie. C. Yay! Congrats! Congrats, oh, man! Congrats! Barky says, now did I win? <laughs> so, uh, Bernard, just uh, just send me an email at the email address that's going to come across the bottom in a sec. <laughs> and I will get that uh, sent out to you. For, um, just so you know, I do still have to paint these, so I probably won't get them out till later in the week, but I did want to uh, did want to at least do the giveaway tonight. Nice. So, yeah. So let's start. Uh, let's start looking and see what what people in the chat are. Actually, I guess before we do that, anybody on the panel got anything upcoming that they want to share and or talk about? Um, no. Well, I just want to say thanks to um, um, Jason last week because um, he publicised um, my channel, and I went from. 24 to I max I think I made 38 this week so it's great thank you Ooh. and some, about some the, of my uh, views, junction and some of my views have gone through the roof so yeah great thank nice. you and thank you for all oh, those new subscribers that's Jason uh, Barnabas Junction no no train oh train, train freak. freak train freak train freak oh awesome because he oh, did great. he did your Monday modeling Monday last week. Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, he's not here tonight, so I, I blew him off. I forgot about him. Oh, did you? Oh, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> and then he says he never wins anything. I don't think Anthony – did you enter, Anthony? You have to enter to win. <laughs> but um, he's still – He's that's true then. Absolutely. So uh, Z or Steve, I think we lost James. I'm not sure what happened to James. I'm uh -oh. here. Just moving camera. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't have anything. Steve, you got anything going on? Yeah, I just finished uh, the barge, and of course the, the uh, welder Whoop, had a piece come off the barge. If I ever get a chance, I'll do some videos. But is is what's up in the top there? Uh, Z, what you're working on? Is that yeah, what it's gonna that's what like I'm making. Done? Yes. Awesome. That's what this plan is. That's why I said I needed to know what to put in the back. 
I need to know if I needed a back door because I can't see the back. And just rock what I was going to show you. Let's see if I can get it out. Or no. There we go. The box fell apart. So for Friday, for me, I made a mess. Let's try and get it back in the box. I am, um, this is something I got in the mail recently, and I think Friday for Hangout with Humanity, I'm going to try and, uh, try and open this up and see if, uh, see if we can't get this working. So, uh, that's a little, uh, sneak peek on my end, and let's, uh. That's too early for me. Yeah. I'm sure, well. It's either too early or it's too late, depending on. To about three I am. I found out one of my engines that I got at a swap meet is a Tyco. Is that interesting? <laughs> it is. It depends on what the engine is too. Some of the Tyco stuffs uh, worth some money these days. So it huh. uh, I doubt it's the one I got. Probably not. But some of it is. Ask a uh, you know I told you. Ray Bobel. I'll take. I'll take the Blackbird take off your hands at a reasonable price. Oh, not the Tyco. She's got a uh, oh. Proto 2K uh, SD7 Clinton Blackhawk. Uh, Blackbird. So Almar me. was asking if anybody does a show like this on weekends. My SD? Um, I know I uh, Lee Anful Road Layout and Locked on Sunday. Yeah. Sunday morning. Uh, does one at, at uh, it's in the morning for Z. It's at noon Eastern time. Yeah. Um. I know if you want uh, a different sort of. Uh, well, it's probably late to that but too. different <laughs> is international scale models, as well, which I like. They're you know they're cars and planes and and that and yep. whatnot. But I really like their stream as well. They do uh, you know airbrushing and stuff, which you know the techniques are all app applicable. Uh, so I think that's really. Uh, do you say applicable really awesome regularly? Though. No. But I do <laughs> like the word applicable. Uh, Silicon Valley Lines has an open house April seventeenth. Uh, Andy probably was not here when we talked about this earlier, uh, but you can drive a train on the SVL layout from the comfort of your own PC or Mac, and the cameras that you see in the locomotives are courtesy of James. Oh, James, what? I didn't, I didn't uh, check cool. in with you. Do you have anything you want to? Uh, uh not really i'm at about well on my channel i'm at about 50 subscribers so i mean i know exactly how uh midsummer feels with that you know, so, you're watching it go up and you're like oh this is interesting uh, cool. what kind of stuff are you gonna put on your channel uh right now it's just mainly i trying to do a short on mondays or tuesdays which is just like something under 60 seconds with trains moving them around etc and then I think at the end of the week, I'm trying to do the updates on where I'm at. Uh, I usually work on everything late in the evening. And so I get like Sunday through Thursday to really shoot the video and whatnot. Yeah, uh, it, it, it takes time. Well, that's, uh, it that's does take sure. time, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to thank <laughs> Shay for Shay's super sticker that uh, Shay sent for three dollars. Thank you so much, uh, Shay. And we also got Anthony Dodge with a very uh, creative <laughs> super sticker for the price of six dollars and sixty-six cents. Is that six for a saying, Sparky's saying, "See you over there." I think he's heading over to Tom's. Uh, Drew at Nordell does a stream on Friday nights. It's called, uh, he's doing something called the Manifest Podcast. Uh, it's actually a couple younger gentlemen in the model railroading industry. I actually think it's model railroading industry, model railroading hobby. Uh, it's actually really interesting to hear uh, a younger perspective on the hobby. So that's that's something that's interesting uh, to check That'd out as cool. well. Yeah, so Midsummer Rail should come to my stream. I could get him a three to five person boost. Uh, if you don't know... Uh, Greg, you, you know Anthony's on at 3.30 on Fridays. 3 to 5 person. Anthony. Oh, yeah. 3.30. Okay. Uh, Rail artist is heading out. 
Uh, here is, if people are interested, here is James's link so you can easily find it. Uh, I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to that 100 because that link is a bit ridiculous. Oh, so you can change. Yeah, I know. I know. It's back the before I changed. The the, yeah, back before I changed to the branded, I was on YouTube early enough that they let anybody do the yep. branded URLs. So I gave that up when I changed the name. Yeah. James, thank you so much for uh, not welcome. for getting me off the six six six, bringing it home with a little four 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 instead. I do, uh, I do much, much appreciate that. Um... Andy Ambrose coming through as well. Oh, it looks like he's gonna post. Uh... Crazy Joe's got a live stream, but not on the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ink wanted to know if I'm going to do a, a... Ink wanted to know if I was going to do a video Central. on... Um, I believe this is the link to Tom. Is this... Who's... Uh... I've got yeah, Tom's sure. link up. Oh, this is James's link, is what oh, uh, John's posting again. Uh, Shay says his boxcar came in today. Thank you for getting that, which was uh, the Northlands boxcar we sent him. Oh. Uh, yep, Tom is going live now. He probably has his five-minute uh, little thing rolling, so <laughs> I'm actually going to uh, check. Yep. <laughs> oh, thank you for 56 now, everybody. Whoever was playing that epidemic sound music, that's not cool because I don't pay them. So I'll get a copyright strike for that music playing on my channel now. So you should be able to note, fix that after your after the stream is done. Yeah, you lose the chat, so it's kind of a bummer. Oh, that's when you sucks. have to edit it for that now. So anyway, on that note, everyone, I'll see you over at Tom's a little bit later. Have a good night, everybody. It's all about humanity.